Hi, thanks for joining us this week on Real Estate Insiders TV. I'm Danny Poulos with the Elite Lending Team at Fembi. Joining us today is Bill Hall from Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and more importantly, or as important, he's also president of the Jupiter Tequesta Hope Sound Association of Realtors. Um, we're not going to have time to go through all of Bill's credentials because that would be a whole half hour show. But Bill's an expert also on quality of life issues uh, in our area and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Bill, thanks for coming and take a minute and tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, thanks Danny. Thanks for having uh, us. Thanks for having an uh, interest in our issues. Uh, my background has been commercial and residential real estate development. I've been uh, chairman of Palm Beach County's Land Use Advisory Board for seven years. I was on it for 15 and also on uh, the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council for a number of years as a governmental or governor appointee. And we're here today to, to share a little bit about what Florida Realtors do and our association does. We do a lot of work with the public and making sure that when they buy their home, which is normally one of the largest purchases they ever make, that it is handled in a very professional manner and done with eth ethical standards. And the Florida Realtors and the Jupiter Quest, the Hope Sound Association, strives to do that. And we service uh, realtors throughout Palm Beach County. One of the things we also do is we do a lot of work in making sure that citizens private property rights are addressed and that they are maintained for that individual. And one of the things that we do in doing that is we do outreach and get involved in public issues which affect the quality of life of the citizens of our communities and of the state of Florida. And one of the things we're doing, Danny, right now in, in that regard is an issue all about Florida, which is the uh, new rail system that's going in or the new high-speed uh, passenger train from Miami all the way up to Orlando. So I know people have heard about that all aboard right. Florida, but uh, and they may have gotten excited when they first heard about it because they, they go high-speed rail, everybody wants to get someplace faster, sure. and Miami or West Palm up to Orlando. Orlando and throw the kids on a train and, and not have to drive sounds all good but obviously the realtors are concerned because they're they're trying to protect quality of life issues in our area so tell us what are the major concerns well first tell us exactly what the program is again well all aboard Florida is is touted as a High-speed rail system from Miami all the way up to Orlando with stops in, Mi in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and then or finalizing in Orlando, or the reverse, originating in Orlando, going down to, to Miami. And all of that sounds, like you say... Well, only four stops. Only right? four stops. Sounds very interesting until you start to get into the issues. So what people like about it, obviously, is the, you know not commuting and not driving. So on the surface... Sounds great. What are the what are the concerns? Well, there are a lot of concerns, and and they all revolve around the quality of life, home values. As realtors, we are concerned about. There was a study done in uh, Atlanta, and that study in equivalent dollars today showed that homes within a thousand feet of that rail system decreased in value ninety four thousand dollars. There are also concerns. I've had realtors come to me and say, look, I've had eight or nine phone calls from people who live along that rail system, and they're concerned about being able to even sell their home, let alone having a reduction in, in the value. So home sales, home values, those are very important. Um, noise is very important. The quality of life, life safety issues are important. The, the stops, the amount of time that these trains, 46 trains, a day when you combine the high-speed rail and you combine the freight going through your community can you imagine what the impact is vehicular impact is of that traffic on constrained roadways throughout South Florida today. Well, you make a good point because the tracks are already there. Tracks are there. So people Roads are, are dealing with trains now. Anyone that lives up in North County where we do knows what it's like when the freight train comes through and you think that one end is in to question the other end still in Miami. And that happens. By the time so it comes through. So we want people to understand. The tracks are there already, but we're talking about the frequency of stops now. Yeah, the frequency of stops right now with, with the freight traffic won't run 12, 14 trips a day. And those trail those trips currently, especially the Jupiter area, can uh, encompass three crossings, three road crossings. 
And when you have issues of life safety, i.e., you have people who live east of the track, and the hospital is west of the track, right. and the EMT guys can't get to you and they can't get you to the hospital, that's a concern. That is a quality of life issue that we need to make sure is addressed, and there are ways to do that. Okay, well, you've mentioned a couple of times freight. Well, guess what? Up to our conversation today, I didn't hear anything about freight. All I heard about was taking people from Miami, West Palm, Port Lauderdale, right. to Disney World. Right. So what are the people that are opposed to it are a little more well informed, I think. So what, are the, what does everybody else need to know about what the end game is here? Well, uh, the end game is an interesting term. That's exactly what is really the root of this thing. What people have to understand is the FEC Railway is a freight line. It has always been a freight line. And it is a freight line that along the east coast of Florida takes all the freight from South Florida, the ports of Miami, the ports of Fort Lauderdale, takes those up to, to Jacksonville. And from Jacksonville, Danny, they go out throughout the country. And, and, and it's a nice thing. Brings in a lot of revenue to Florida. Nobody is concerned about the revenue stream. Everybody wants sure. the revenue stream. But we don't want to have an impact of quality of life to, to utilize it. What's happening, the end game is, frankly, it's all about the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal in, in 2015, for those of you who don't know, is, is being widened and will be open to mega ships at that point in time. What in essence that does to South Florida is we will now have a doubling of freight coming into the ports of Miami, the ports of, of Fort Lauderdale. That freight has to get out of the state somehow. So the high-speed rail, frankly, uh, in, in my opinion, was uh, something that they had to do to make a, a care for legislators and government to be able to access right-of-ways so they can get up the eastern seaboard, they can get to Orlando, ultimately get over to Tampa, and they can run the freight out of the state of Florida, which is great. But how they run it and when they run it is uh, the problem. So that, that's a really the point we don't want to miss here, is that when everyone here is, you know, woo -woo, all aboard Florida, let's, let's go on vacation. You're gonna, you're the gonna real have, point is that that's not what this is about. You're going to have they're, major impact. Yeah, they're pushing it through so, so people will like it for that reason, but at the end of the day, it's to move freight and make money moving freight. It's to move freight, make money. I mean, they, they will do passenger rail, no question, as long as they can make a dollar out of it. I don't believe that's 32 trips a day. Right. So, <laughs> what's, so what's, is ship. there a solution? There are solutions, and, and frankly, you have to break them down. One of the big issues is marine traffic. Uh, the new river in Fort Lauderdale, the, the, the river over the, the waterways in Tequesta and Jupiter and all up into Martin County, they all have bridges, and they're low bridges, which means that your boating traffic, your marine traffic, cannot get under, through, around, over, or anything else with those bridges while the train's coming through. A train every 15 to 30 minutes is going to be a huge impact, quite frankly, because of the, the length of time it takes for that bridge to open and close, not counting the time of the train. This is not a two-minute whiz-by and all of a sudden the bridge right. is back open. So you significantly constrain marine traffic and marine trade, which by federal law, you cannot uh, adhere, or adhere to any process which would make a navigable water unnavigable. And this in essence does do that. I mean, those of us that live up here, we know just the time it takes for the bridge to go up and down. Right. I mean, add that to the time a train coming through. You, I mean, yeah. you, you're really talking about a lot of sitting around. You know, that's the Marines. So one of the issues is they could, you know, frankly, they could, they could buy right away if it were appropriate and do an elevated bridge. They could dig a tunnel, or frankly, they could have less trips. Right. And and if you did less trips, as long as they didn't add to the length of those trips and make it uh, unusable from that perspective, that might be a, a better solution. Another solution is they could take the freight traffic and move it all the way west right. in the counties and utilize the CSX railways. Now, FEC doesn't particularly want to do that because they don't want to have to pay usage and right-of-ways to CSX, but that is a way to mitigate some of the problems. Right. Now, we know there's an, a, a lot of other issues about the expense, the safety expenses at the crossings, but um, let's get to what 
is there anything people can do? Is it too late? Well, it, it isn't too late. You know, unfortunately, the, the, the public looks at these things and they hear the, the upside when somebody starts it. And as the snowball takes effect, the realities come into play. It is not too late to talk to your local officials, your state your officials, and your national officials. A lot of this is a federally uh, directed and federally uh, protected issue in terms of what the laws are or what the right of ways or what the rules are, but those things can change. What FEC had as, as rights back a hundred years ago doesn't necessarily address the social need of the society at large today. And to put one at risk for the benefit of one corporation and the freight that they're going to utilize right. is not really an equitable situation for the citizens. And there's an economic uh, uh, effect and pressure on the municipalities that, that have to handle Absolutely. all these crossings, right? Well, in Palm Beach County, there are 114 crossings. Oh my God. <laughs> so you take 114 crossings with an average cost of anywhere from 200 to 400,000, excuse me, 200 to 600,000 per crossing, that's a lot of money. The city of West Palm Beach, the city of Jupiter, a number of cities are now going to Tallahassee during this legislative session saying, give us some relief, pay this bill for us, help us do this. Well, quite frankly, FEC needs to pay for it. If they're going to be the recipient of the upside of all the additional freight, believe me, they can itemize and figure out how to pay this over time instead of having the citizens, the municipality, and the state of Florida paying their own freight for their own upgrades. I mean, really, if you think about this, the, the towns up the Treasure Coast really not a benefit, a lot of benefit to them that have to go all the way to West Palm to even get on a train. This is a benefit of large municipalities, metropolitan areas to, to the downside of small communities right. being the beast of burden. Unbelievable. Well, Bill, um, I know people are going to have a lot more questions about this than we've even covered today. Sure. And I know you're really spearheading the, the work on making people aware of what the problems are and what they can do. So uh, tell everybody how they can reach you uh, for more information or if they want to get involved. If, if you have some issues in, in this regard, feel free to contact me at 561 373 0695. Love to hear your input on both sides. Uh, you know, the lobbyists for the rail company are friends of mine. You know, so I understand what the issues are. Nobody is trying to, to shortchange anybody, but we sure don't want to shortchange the public. Yeah, they just want Bill to be a little quiet about this. Sure. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming. Right, That's a great information. Everyone should know.